Okay, for 2b, we notice that there is a different type of equation that's here. Uh, so we are going to still do the same process. So if I want to find the x-intercept, we'll start with that first. I'm still going to put in a, a 0 for y. So I have 0 equals this. Now, a couple different ways that you could do this one. You could multiply 2 minus x, 2 minus x, multiply that together, simplify it, factor that one, and then get the answer that way. However, you're going to notice if you go down that path, that it's, it's going to be something that's not going to be able to be factored, so then you'd have to use quadratic. Let me show you an easier way. This is where you want to know those different techniques and why that would be advantageous to you to know all those three techniques. So look at the way this one's written. We got a quantity squared. If, whenever you see something like that, a quantity squared, you want to use the square root uh, principle on that square root property because that's going to make it a lot easier to solve because it's in that form. What you're going to do is instead of expanding it, we're going to instead add 5 to both sides of the equation. We're going to isolate the one that's squared. Then you're going to take the square root of both sides. And so remember when you do take the square root of both sides, you, uh, you are going to get a plus or minus 5 on the left hand side there. And if you take the square root of that one, the square root's going to get rid of the square here, and that's going to leave you with 2 minus x. We need to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract the 2 over the other side. So I get negative 2 plus or minus square root of 5 equals negative x. Now remember, there's a negative that's still there, so be careful. We've got to clear out that negative. So what you can do is you're going to multiply the entire equation, both sides, by negative 1. And we do that because that way we'll be able to get just x by itself. Now on this side, negative times the negative will give you a positive 2. Now this is already plus or minus. If you multiply that by a negative, it's still going to remain plus or minus. So this would be your x-intercept. And you can write it this way on a test. You can write it with the plus or minus. You don't have to uh, separate those. But Technically, it's 2 plus square root of 5 and 2 minus square root of 5 that would be your answers. So we do have two of them there for x-intercept. If we do y-intercept, we do the same process. We put a 0 in for x. Now, a common mistake here is to automatically assume that the last number there is going to be your y-intercept. Okay, that's true if it's written in the, the form with, with three terms like we had for, uh, for 2a, but for this one, be careful, you got to put, that's not going to be the case. You want to put, just put it in like you would normally do. So if you put a 0 in for x, then we get 2 squared, which is 4. We get 4 minus 5, which means we get negative 1 as our answer. So don't just assume it's going to be the last number all the time. If it's written out in, in, in this form, then put a 0 in for x to get the answer. So uh, these two here would be your x-intercepts, and the y right here, that y equals negative 1. Uh, that's your y-intercept.